All right, here we are, part one of the lysis. So moving on from the first Alcibiades, which is sort of the introduction to philosophy, we're continuing on to the Lysis. Now the Lysis is a dialogue between Socrates and two young men, and it's all about friendship. And so the next few videos are gonna be really focusing on friendship. And the first thing um, Plato brings up, you know, it's really explicit what is friendship and, and who can be friends. And one of the conclusions they come to is that the evil cannot be friends with the evil. And so that's what I want to talk about in this video. Now, evil, how do we define evil in this way? Well, if we're going to stick with Plato, we'll talk about the four cardinal virtues. Back from the previous video, you had fortitude, temperance, prudence, justice. Well, a lack of those four things would be an evil person. So an evil person would be someone who, instead of having fortitude, has cowardice. Instead of having temperance, has concupiscence. Instead of having prudence, ignorance. And instead of justice, malice. So we'll just go through those four and talk about why that would prevent friendship. Why the evil cannot be friends with the evil. Imagine someone who has cowardice. Now, the daily cowardice does not involve the inability to fight dragons. Daily cowardice is more like the inability to perform duties. You know, when something's required of you. The brave person does their duty. They do what is required of them regardless of, you know, regardless of how they feel, regardless of whether or not they think they're qualified. These things, they just... They have a duty and they do it. The cowardly person shirks that duty. They do not do what they ought to do. They, you know, shirk responsibilities, I think, is probably the way I'll just describe it. Um, you know, imagine in a household. Certain things have to be done in a household. They just have to. There's maintenance of the house, which is menial labor, and everyone needs to take part in it. And those who don't do their part, well, anyone who's lived with someone who doesn't do their part knows how that turns out. <laughs> um, it, it does begin to prevent friendship in some ways. Um, a lack of temperance, concupiscence. What we mean by concupiscence, I, concupiscence can mean so many things. What we mean here as the opposite of temperance is uh, self-gratification. Um, the inability to say no to desires, urges, things like that. And so this is the person that takes care of themselves and all they do is that which makes them feel good rather than uh, either self-improvement or, you know, just saying no to desires um, that are sort of base, our base animalistic desires, which I mean like hunger is a base animalistic desire and it's necessary that you follow it to some degree because otherwise you will die. Um, Augustine of Hippo describes it as um, the virtue in the, the area of hunger lies in satisfying the body's need without going beyond that into what is wanted but unneeded. That's where self-gratification comes in. And of course you can do that with all sorts of things other than just food. But it, it causes one to become egocentric when you're constantly just gratifying yourself. And the person who's turned in on themselves cannot be a friend to another person because friendship requires giving to the other. Future video, we'll get there. Um, prudence, opposite of prudence is ignorance. And prudence can often just be thought of as like the, the use of reason correctly, the use of the intellect. So ignorance would be the improper use of the intellect. This is either to show no concern for the other, so to not remember things about the other person, to not care about them in some ways, or to, um, to believe lies, to believe falsehoods, to create in your mind phantasms. Um, we call this projecting onto the other person. Um, 
And that can be really harmful because that begins to erode um, someone's someone's you know connection to reality really so if I don't know anything about the people that I live with or the people that I'm friends with if I if I never remember anything about them I'm not I don't really know them I can't really have a communion with them because I don't know them I don't know anything about them and even further, if I, in my head, if I construct lies about them and I treat them according to those misconceptions, those lies, I mean, that's an obvious problem, I think. Um, this can often happen with, um, I think, the, the idea of um, not speaking to someone. I, I've had a friend one time we didn't um, we didn't talk for a, about a year, and you know we had kind of had a falling out a little bit. We didn't talk for about a year, and well, when in, you know, I had in my head I had constructed what they must think of me because I've never reached out to apologize or to sort of retreat them. Well, they had constructed the same thing in their head. They had constructed a lie and they had bought the lie that this rift that had happened was either was our fault, you know, my fault, or they don't want this friendship. You know, we spent a whole year not communicating, not, not you know, realizing this friendship all based on, I mean, things we made up in our heads. That's, I mean that can those who are ignorant of the other cannot really be friends with them and then lastly to talk about um the opposite of justice malice true desire to harm the other i, I mean that just that's the most direct way to destroy um a person to destroy a person to destroy a friendship in any way is to to actively seek the harm of the other and i'm the, obviously <laughs> that destroys friendships and so in those ways if you know if you take the four cardinal virtues those four sort of primary ways of growing in excellence if you lack those four then yeah you cannot be friends with someone and so the evil cannot be friends now the evil cannot be friends with anyone as we'll we'll explore in other um, videos but uh, specifically, the evil cannot be friends with the evil because they are both going at it in these four, so sort of these four deficiencies. A quick little thing at the end. Now, obviously, no person is all evil. And none of us are perfectly good. We all have an admixture of both. And it's this growing in virtue, this growing in excellence that's so important because as we go through our life and we have relationships with people and friendships and communion with people, you, you hurt them. You hurt people. It's, it's just a fact. Our, our failings hurt people. And it's the growing past that, the being able to get, um, you know, to apologize. Apology doesn't always mean you're sorry, you're, you've done something wrong. You can apologize even if you're not the one in the wrong. I think, I think the best way to look at an apology is and to apologize to someone means that you value a relationship with them more than any harm caused by either of you. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail with that. Maybe I'll do that in a future video. But friendship implies being able to apologize, being able to say when you were wrong, being able to value that friendship over the faults of either person and to grow in virtue. And that's how, you know, what is bad in us can become good. And that growth towards virtue, which doesn't really happen in a vacuum. Um, it happens through relationship, it happens through community and things like that. So that's why I think it's important to realize that evil you know, vices do not foster friendship, and any friendship fostered on vice is a false friendship and will come crashing down, uh, usually sooner than expected. So that's all I've got for 
First video on the Lysis, first video on friendship. Evil cannot be friends with evil. Thank you so much for joining me in this series on Plato. If you'd like to see the next video in this series, go ahead and click right up there. If you missed it and want to see the previous video in this series, click over there. And if you like this content and want to see more, consider subscribing.